Patrick Mahomes is, let me be clear about this, playing, he is the, at this moment, not the greatest, not the most accomplished, he's the best player who ever lived. Dak Prescott had a better year go. than Patrick Mahomes. There you go. When did I know he was going to be special? His first throw, his rookie year in training camp. Throws it for the touchdown! Unbelievable to Demarcus Robinson! Well, there's a lot of great traits um, about him as a player and him as a leader, um, but he has some unique things that he does that are just uh, that are hard to, to teach. So um, just his playmaking ability and how he sees the field, and I think he sees things that, you know, uh, sees plays to make that a lot of their quarterbacks wouldn't see um, just because his ability to do it. And... Uh, He's just a phenomenal player. And, uh, you know, he picked up kind of this year where he left off last year. And he's, he's got it, you know, he's doing a great job. He's about as real deal as it comes. Yeah, like, like just both. Reinventing the position almost, like the way he plays it in a way. It's crazy. It's crazy. No look passes. Playing enough. with him, playing with him is, all, is off the charge because it's literally never over. Yeah, plays never dead. Never. Like when I tell you never, like you you could be opposite side of the where he's rolling out right 40 yards downfield and he, if he peeks at you out of, out of like the peripheral and his peripheral is unbelievable he'll huck it fucking he'll huck it and it's not even just, just a heater huck right, it right, the, right on the right freaking in the bread money. basket it's nuts it's wild and we're trying to get a couple of young guys uh to understand that quick like hey yo like this yeah. thing's never dead guys who, who played the position and one of the best to ever do it when you watch him besides the obvious things that fans can pick up just the, yeah. the crazy athleticism the throws what is it that you appreciate most about his game when you flip on the tape and watch uh, when i watch him and you know i sent a tweet out earlier this year when i was watching some tape of him saying that we may be watching the most complete quarterback our game has ever seen and you talk about the crazy athleticism, you know, kind of like an Aaron Rodgers type guy um, there. But what he does inside the pocket is pretty special, too, especially for a young guy. But to me, what what separates him from most guys, you know, we've all seen somebody go up on a board and, and draw out a play. And, you know, on that play, it's like, oh, OK, here's what we're expecting to get. And here's where we're expecting to throw this. And this is what your read's going to be and all this stuff. And that's great. A lot of guys can see that and do that and understand that, and it's all good. The next level of playing quarterback is the ability to take that play and now all of a sudden see other throws that may be in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, you want to hit it here. I understand that. But if this guy does this, now I could probably hit it there, or I could hit it here, or if that guy sinks in here and I got, and I got this option. And not very many guys have the ability to creatively see different kinds of throws that can transpire within the course of a play. That to me is what makes Patrick special. You know, he is confident. There's guys that played in the league, that's playing in the league right now, 12, 10 years in, and they're scared back there. Right. You know, he's just a confident guy. Um, this offense is built for him. You know, he can uh, run the ball, he can scramble around, he has a great arm. And then he has all of these unbelievable weapons around him. You got Travis Kelsey. You can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You got Tyreek Hill, and he'll just outrun any man coverage. So he's got a lot of great weapons. He's got Damian Williams that's running the ball well. And they got two good tackles with Eric Fisher and um, and, um, and Mitchell Schwartz. So, you know, they, they definitely have their hands full. It's going to be a good game. The thing about Mahomes that, that, that I see is – it's got to be impossible for a pass rusher to get a beat on him. He's never standing still. Mm -hmm. He's always moving, and and he's always moving unpredictably. Like, did you detect trends or patterns in how he moves, or yeah, is it as right. unpredictable good, for you? Good one. You know what? For us, you know what? Quarterbacks, quarterback coaches, they there's they, a lefty throw. They tell they tell a quarterback whenever you get pressure, step up in between it. And Patrick Mahomes is a guy. He just he just drops Goes all the way deep, back. Right? He'll go back. He'll go back, and I'll run that guy. I'll run that deep tackle and fold around. They don't coach that, but it works for Patrick Mahomes. When did I know he was going to be special? His first throw, his rookie year in training camp, I knew he was going to be special. Came out, threw the ball like 80 yards. I was like, okay, I'm a fast guy, so I'm going to be able to, yeah, I'm going to be able to do something with that. I like that. It surprised you the kind of success he's having this year and no. how much have you paid attention to him? Not a surprise at all. You know, it's, uh, he's been very talented. Everybody's known that since he got to Texas Tech. Um, you know, I, I hosted Pat when he was on his official visit, uh, and we, we knew what type of athlete he was. He's a two-sport guy, uh, has it in his genes. Dad was a baseball player, can throw from any angle, can make plays and extend it, 
and he's not easy to bring down. And I've seen that firsthand. He's a he's a big guy. Um, with the I seen him throw that ball. I was like, oh my god. Just watching that game, I was like, uh, Alex, you're in trouble, man. You know, that's my, Alex, my boy. You know, but that kid right there, he has to be on the field. And he has to play. Like he has to play. To move around in the pocket and then just flick it whenever he needs to, right in the chest of some guy. It was getting pretty frustrating playing him. When we seen him play the Chargers, it looked like he was about to throw the ball away while he was running out of bounds, and boom, found a guy in the end zone. So it's like plays like that that's kind of like, you got to be kidding me. It's a risky throw. There's some danger in that when you start. He made throws that you never see. Travis Kelsey was to my right, and it was me, offensive lineman, and Patrick Mahomes. I lost Patrick Mahomes, but I see the ball coming out around the offensive lineman, like sidearm, on the money to Travis Kelsey. Watch this little three-quarter flip. That's hard enough to do with a ping pong ball, much less a football. Yo, this guy is different. Yeah, Who is it that you sure. see now that makes you say, oh my gosh, this guy's really got it? Uh, well, there's, you know, I look, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, yeah. you look at what he's been able to do the first couple of years and coming in, what, last year, throwing 50 touchdowns. But just the way he throws the ball, you know, his arm angles and getting into position that he gets in to throw, and he's throwing it accurately and uh, has a nice sense in the pocket, you know, right. all those things. He runs well enough. I yeah. mean, he runs good He's enough. He's got you beat there. Yes, he does. He does. Maybe not when I was really young, <laughs> but uh, but sure, sure. It's, uh, yeah, he's he's special. Oh, Stefan, what is the secret to Mahomes, or is there one? I just think you have to play tight coverage in the secondary, and you have to trust your rush to get there. Um, if you give him a lot of time, he's hard to, he's hard to, um, it's, it's hard to make, make plays on the ball with. He's, um, he can get outside the pocket and make plays. He has a strong arm. I remember a throw he made on me, scrambling outside the pocket, um, 50 yards down the field, on the run, across his body. I remember that. He's tough to, he's tough to cover. Patrick Mahomes is, let me be clear about this, playing, he is the, at this moment, not the greatest, not the most accomplished, he's the best player who ever lived. He is a guy who has more influence on the outcome of a given game and who doesn't fold under pressure. Imagine if Peyton Manning got even better under pressure, or if, if Aaron Rodgers' skills were pitched a little higher. That's Patrick Mahomes, he's my guy. Thank you. Lamar Jackson had a better year than Patrick Mahomes. Just on, I'm talking about performing at the position. Yes. Russell Wilson had a better year than Patrick Mahomes. Dak Prescott had a better there year you go. than Patrick Mahomes. There you go. You were doing so well, too. You were going well, too. Now I'm going to go real deep on you, and I'm going to push you right into a corner you will not be able to fight your way out of. Okay. Okay, let's start going down the numbers, shall we? Yes. Passes for first downs this past football season. Dak was second in the NFL with 229. Mahomes was way down at 16th. How about catchable passes? Dak was second in this league. Mahomes was way down at 16th. How about big pass plays? That's 20-plus yard pass plays. Huh, that's interesting. Dak was third in the league. Mahomes was 13th. But I'm going to give you this. He missed a couple of games because of injury. So let's do pass yards per game, which only counts the games that he played. Right. Wait a minute. Dak had 306 pass yards per game. He used to say, he doesn't even break 200. Yeah. Well, he averaged 306, and that was third in the league. Mahomes is way down at seven. That's interesting. How about completions per game? Dak was 24.3. That was tied for fifth. Not bad. Mahomes is down at 12. Huh, that's, that's interesting. And then how about air distance? How far did every pass that Dak attempted travel on average? Huh. That's interesting. Dak was third in the whole league on air. No dinking Dak anymore. He's throwing it way down the field. And wait a minute. Mahomes was 13. He's actually dinking and dunking more than you think. Yo, stop it. He is. He's throwing little short outs to Tyreek, who's turning it up for 70 yards. Yak. You know it, and I know it. And then how about if, if we go to touchdown passes? Again, played a couple more games, but 
Dak threw 30. That was fourth in the league. And Mahomes was down at tied for eight. So top, uh, oh, he died okay. tied for eight at okay. twenty six. Well, again, but you you put him in the Hall of Fame like zero ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. Let's just do it on the field Sunday. Let's yeah. just put him in the Hall of Fame. Sunday is a coronation. So, okay, <laughs> help me out. Better weapons? Uh, boy, I think Kansas City had way better weapons than Dak Prescott had. Would you take Kelsey or Jason Witten? Would you take Tyreek or Amari? And I love Amari, but. Think about this. At home, Amari caught 52 balls. He caught 78% of the passes thrown to him at home. Then he goes away, and he shrinks, and he disappears. He caught only 27 balls away from Jerry World. He caught 52% of the passes thrown to him on the road. So 52 catches at home, 27 on the road. And th that's handicapping what Dak did. So despite all of the above, Dak just clearly outperformed Mahomes this year. Does that mean he's better than Patrick? No. But did he have a better year? Yes, he did. Patrick had, by his MVP standards, kind of a blah year, just kind of an okay year. Yeah, because and then all of a sudden, he pops up and gets every break in the playoffs, <laughs> and he winds up getting to play Houston and getting to play Tennessee at home. Two teams that were 10 and 6 and 9 and 7. Everything broke right for Patrick Mahomes. I give you that. Here we are, and it's coronation week for Patrick Mahomes. Oh, I'm glad you understand it's yeah. coronation week. Skip, look, you, all, you love to say how many ca catchable balls that Dak threw. Well, my guy had 12 winnable games that he won. Your guy won eight. Mm. Case closed. Because that's what we play. Uh, at Club Shay Shay, we only serve dubs and L's. <laughs> now, what you want? Are his weapons the reason why Patrick Mahomes is so great? Of course it is. What are y'all... Are you kidding me? Let me ask y'all a question. What? Let me ask you a question. Goodness. And it's very, very ordinary. It's very, very fundamental to me. This is how I feel about it. If receivers couldn't get separation and get open, would Patrick Mahomes look as great? Yes. How? He would drift in the pocket like he does and allow them to get separation? No, he would not. My answer is no, he wouldn't look <laughs> as He wouldn't look as there great. There we go. That's what I'm saying. No, like, again, Dan, be careful. I am not questioning whether or not Patrick Mahomes is great. I understand the brother is great. To be as young as he is, the moxie that he has, flinging the football the way that he does, choosing judiciously to know when to run, obviously buying himself time in the pocket. All of these things are gifts from the quarterback position. He deserves credit for. But I'm going to ask y'all again in all seriousness, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, McCole Hardman, you know, Damian Williams, these boys, uh, Travis Kelsey, excuse me, if he didn't have these brothers, what would they do? Let's stop acting. We, we can't have such respect. And by the way, I got to take a moment to give love to Eric Bieniemy. I talked about Aaron and mm -hmm. Andy Reid calling plays. How about Eric Bieniemy, who should be a damn head coach in the National Football League? Don't get me started with that nonsense. But the, the job that he has done as the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, the multitude of weapons that they have at their disposal. I, and I guess the way, and I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, Dan. Just answer this for me. Tell me a time in the modern era where you've seen one team have these weapons on offense together. I'm talking about together. Yeah, last, together. Year, last year with Ooh. the Rams when they had Robert Woods mm. and Sammy Watkins. The Steelers. And, and, oh, the Steelers had Roethlisberger with Antonio about, Brown. About, oh, yeah, yeah, and Tom, Tom, two years ago with the Eagles. The greatest show on turf. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Wait a minute. Antonio Brown. Yep. With Le'Veon Bell, yeah, I got it. You say Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah. Well, I understand he could ball. I am, I am making the argument toward you. I think Tyreek, I said it. I'm in. Tyreek Hill, McCole Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey. I weigh you four dudes. Okay, right. wait, wait. Four. Okay, look, look. Wait, wait, ain't nobody had that. Look, oh, yes, the has... Rams did. I disagree well, they with didn't that. Like they didn't have Kill, that. Tyreek Come on, man. Okay, they but didn't but have they didn't that, have a Tyreek Hill, but they still... They, you're going to tell me that Brandon Cooks, receivers. Robert Woods. I didn't say they couldn't play. I said they didn't measure up to these two. No, I would they say as a unit. Absolutely do. I would say as football. a unit they did, yeah. There was no reason to get Antonio Brown back, who has a reputation that is well documented. Why did they do it? Because of Patrick Mahomes. And let me give you an example. Patrick Mahomes is becoming Steph Curry. He's shifting the paradigm. We never thought in the NBA, if you had told people 10 years ago in the NBA, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to just shoot threes. Well, I mean, like a, a couple? No, like 40 a game. Who's going to shoot him? This little tiny guy from Davidson, he's going to shoot threes. And it's going to change the whole league. In fact, he's going to get rid of centers. What? 
yeah, like the game will get so fast and Steph Curry will have such incredible range that you will be now seeking to find the next Steph Curry. He will change the NBA. It sounds ridiculous. And that's what Houston's copying and Portland's copying and Milwaukee's trying to find and the Celtics are trying to find the next Steph Curry who has a range that is hard to explain. What's frightening about Patrick Mahomes, he hasn't gotten breaks. Kareem Hunt out the door. This year, offensive line banged up. Tyreek Hill hurt. They're on their third running back. And he is putting up numbers that are frightening. They're the only team I've ever seen at the midfield stripe. It feels like they're in the red zone. That's the red zone for them. Everybody else, it's 20 and in. For Chicago, sometimes it feels like six yards and in. For Kansas City, midfield is the red zone. You know what? We talked about that during the season, and I know up at ESPN, I said that on TV. I said we've kind of normalized some of the spectacular things that he does that aren't normal because when the MVP conversation was at its height during the season, it was all Lamar Jackson, it was Deshaun Watson, it was Russell Wilson, and rightfully so. Those guys were balling too. But Pat was still playing some of his best football, and we were just kind of overlooking it like, yeah, yeah, well, that's what Pat's supposed to do. That's just what he does. But then when he had that run against Tennessee and he took it to another level, well, let's just say when he came back from injury against Tennessee the first time down in Nashville and he threw for 300 plus, you know, after having not played for a couple of weeks and really they should have won that game. You're just like, see what I'm see, And that was just kind of like brushed under the rug. Like, yeah, well, that's what he's supposed to do. Well, not coming off an injury, he's not supposed to do that. So I, I think now having won a league MVP and a Super Bowl MVP, what will really kind of solidify just or rather maybe just kind of really shine a light on just how special he is is once he signs this contract because trust me we will talk about that forever because I, you know it's going to be something that literally has us all going wow and rightfully so he's that special he makes quick decisions and makes good decisions and makes them quickly so he doesn't stand back there and you know have a lot of indecision a lot of just you know being frozen in the pocket or frozen with the ball, he, he gets it out of his hands. Um, unless he's not pressured, then he extends the plays, and then then the other problems start to. I, I felt pretty confident that, that we had a player uh, that was good, and then I had a chance to look at him and, and talk to him, and all you need is five minutes with a kid, and you know what he's about. Right. He, he's solid. Um, and then he comes on board, and he, he does everything you ask him to do. He doesn't try to trump Alex Smith, right, and that can be sticky. You know that yeah, how sure. that goes. Right. Um, Alex was phenomenal with him. Uh, I mean, he owes Alex the world there, uh, just on on how Al both of them handle each other. But the things that Alex taught him about being a pro. Yep. Um, and then he put that into use. We had a chance, kind of a dress rehearsal, uh, when he played Denver, not right. knowing Week that. 17. Yeah, yep. not knowing that we were uh, going to lose Alex the next year, uh, but. He steps in and does a heck of a job for us against their defense. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like they weren't playing their guys. Right. And and um, and so we had a chance to see him. And he, he did the same things he did in practice. So those no look things, the left, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, we we didn't see a left hand throw in that game, but he came back and did one uh, against. He Denver, throws better so. left handed than he does. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, coach. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. He likes to rag on me. Yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. So, anyways, I, I, you know, we saw it in that game, and we saw it every day in practice, and I felt pretty comfortable uh, with the move there. Is there is there one specific play early on or in practice where you just went like, like I knew this guy is good, but holy cow, like that, that was unreal. I mean, is there a moment like that? Yeah, he I... did. He did one of those no look jobs in practice early. Yeah. And Justin Houston went this way, and the ball went that way, <laughs> and Justin looked over, and you can always tell with players. Right. When players go, man, this dude's a real deal. Uh, you know, you're, you're pretty sure that's uh, that's yeah, the case. That's of, kind of special, um, yeah. So Justin really, you know, he, he went. Listen, this guy's unbelievable. Right. I mean, that, that thing he just did right there, you just don't see, but. Well, his overall skill set is sickening. I mean, it really is. He's double jointed. I mean, he can throw the ball from any platform possible, running to his left, fading backwards. He can get out of trouble. Um, you know, I, I compliment everybody. I've been accused of that. But this guy has, uh, I mean, he's got off the, off the chart arm talent. Skill level is unbelievable. And he's got a playing style um, that reminds me of Favre. I mean, he's, he's a young Favre. That's why I think Andy Reid went and got him. 
he, he won't quit on any plays. He makes a lot of plays when there's nothing there. And uh, I don't have time to talk about him anymore. <laughs> Are a lot of the fundamental stuff that people work on quarterbacks with, do you, are they out the window with him? Yeah, I mean, I remember asking him. He made a throw against Louisiana Tech, the greatest throw I've ever seen. And he didn't set his feet. He's running to his left. And I said, why don't you set your feet? Because you don't have to. He goes, exactly. <laughs> you know, he just doesn't have to get himself in a perfect throwing position to throw down the field accurate passes. He's, um, you know, he's, he's been blessed with a lot of talent. And they've surrounded him with the perfect scheme and a great supporting cast and the right coach. With, um, you know, there was always talk about how interested you, you were in Patrick Mahomes coming out in the draft. Yeah. You know, just take us back to one. Absolutely. What, what, had an individual day. We were, we were um, picking at 11. And uh, you, what you saw on film were some of these off-schedule throws. You saw arm strength, really good arm talent. Right. Um, they threw it a lot. There, there was a lot on him in the offense he was playing. So, you know, it's a four-wide set. He's getting blitzed. Uh, you know, a lot of times they're short in protection in – he just was the spaghetti sauce uh, for, a, for a decent team, not a great team. Right. And so then it was like the second element. You've, you've done all your tape study, which was uh, pretty exhausting. We go there for a day, and it was an interesting day. We started there. We ended up at Tennessee, saw Camara, ended up uh, in Ohio State, uh, working out Lattimore and those guys. Holy cow. And, um, but he was he was exceptional in in the meeting that we had we did you know we do a series of tests in in, in a room uh we give him the install actually send it to him in an email the night before put it up on the board go through it take us through it we spent the better part of a whole day had lunch with him later on and he was very impressive and certainly a guy that was a, a targeted player for us and yeah. so here here the draft comes and the one thing that was unique is Marshawn Lattimore was sliding. Right. So now in a draft room, you've got a, a player maybe with a tick higher grade, the yeah. corner. Right. And yet you've got a potential franchise quarterback. So there's always that dilemma. Right. And, uh, you know, that continued to slide. And then when you're in our seat, you want, if two of them fall to 10, you know, yeah. you got one of these guys. Right. And, and both fell to 10. Yeah. And then Andy went to 10. Yeah. And, the, the question that we've never really answered is what would we have done at 11 with both available? And I, uh, I don't know if we, if we would have uh, changed because Lattimore's grade was so good. Yeah, he's great. And, and, you know, you're looking at a corner, uh, and there's always that, and, and it, it, the thinking is, is challenging. There's always that it's Lattimore helps your team immediately with Breeze. The other player helps your team long term. And so yeah. we deal with that a lot. Right. Yeah.